Hello, my name is Dr. Zimberman, and this is a video about the Zimberlab Roof A building system. The whole system is packed in this reservoir. All the models, most of the textures, and the manual can be found at the reservoir. So first, let's take a look on how to use the reservoir. Here we have the main screen that displays information about the system. The manual topics can be found here at the right. Clicking one of those buttons will show the information at the screen. And then there are smaller information buttons can be found beside some of the parts and will display information about those specific parts. And then here we have the naming panel because all the parts of a roof have different names. Uh, you can see the fields, the valleys, the base axis, what we call, and then the cap axis. It's when we make um, a T connection or an L turn. Um, these parts in this direction will be called cap, um, and the parts in the base direction will be called base. Then there are the reserve frames. It are those white outlines you see around the models. Touching a frame will open a menu and there you have uh, buttons where you can select one of the models that then will appear above the reser. Um, if you look at the miniature models themselves, um, there are different colors that show the different faces a model has. You can see here this model has two faces on the outside and we can also look at the insides. Again here there's a color that stands for each face the model has. Uh, written on it are the names of the textures that are applied to it by default. Um, if you are working with ambient occlusion maps, you will need to replace uh, some of them depending on what you are building. Um, and those are the ones that are already uh, on the model. If you touch a miniature model, you get another menu. And here you have access to all these maps that you may need, the UV maps and different versions of the ambient occlusion maps. Just selecting one of those, it will be handed to you and you can drop it directly onto the model. Also, um, when using the reservoir frames, because we are limited to 11 characters per button, we use abbreviations here instead of the complete model names. If you are unsure which one you need, just touch the miniature model and the same name, the name that is used at the reservoir frames, is written here on top of this uh, menu. Looking at the complete reservoir, you can see it has two sections divided by this gray line here. Um, because the system provides two different roof styles. Uh, there's the pointed roof on the left and uh, options for manslet roof on the right. Um, all what is on the left here, all those models connect to each other, which is not the case with the ones on the right side. The system uses snap to grid and the align tool to assemble the parts. You can get some info here at the manual where at the topic assembling the parts. But if you are unfamiliar with the concepts, I strongly advise to watch our other video. It's called Assembling Parts and you can find it here at the same channel, which explains the two concepts in depth. Okay, let's take a look at the pointed roof style. Here at the overview image, we can see the base part, which is four meters in height, 10 meters in width, and the length is meant to be resized during building. We have a three meter version and a two meter version of this uh, height. Um, so we have three different slopes, three different heights to build with for the pointed roof style. Here we can see the parts themselves. Let us one out, the four meter one. Place it aside. We are snapping to a grid of uh, 0 0.125 units for this builder. Um, we have end parts. This one is the end out, it's sticking out. So I can snap it in place like this. And we can change the angle of this part by changing its, uh, its length to what we desire. Then uh, we have uh, end in parts. And I'm going to use the align tool because this is going faster. 
And again, we can change the angle by changing the length of the part. We have also a closed version of this part and in closed Again, we can change the angle. And if we want to preserve snap to grid functionality, we should uh, snap resize using the grid above. Um, and as our grid is at uh, 0 0.125, the snap resize should be done at a double, so at uh, 0 0.250. Uh, everything should end at uh, 250. Um, so two meters is okay, like this. Then we go to two, 250, 2500. 2750, all those uh, sizes are okay to preserve snap to grid functionality for the part. Then we can make turns in the roof with the L connect parts. This is uh, going uh, for the same height from 4 to 4, 3 to 3, 2 to 2, but also you can change height of the roof by turning. So you can go from 4 to 3, from 4 to 2, or from 3 to 2 as well. Take the main 4 to 4 part. And so we make a, a turn in the roof. Um, you can see the shadow lines here now, so here we will have to uh, place uh, another ambient occlusion map which extends this shadow, but we will look at it a bit, a bit later. Um, so changing in height, this is a 4 to 3. Um, let's take the main tree straight. So here we have we made a turn, but we went from four meter to three meter in height. Then um, we have the T connects. Similar as with the uh, L-Connect, we can change the height of our roof. Um, let's take 4 to 4. So this is looking like this. And then we have um, single-sided versions of the base parts for one side to close the other end if we are using a T-connect. Like this. And again here we can change in uh, in height, let's take a look at the 4 to 2. Two straights. Like this, we went to a two meter high roof. Next are the cutout parts. Those are uh, one sided versions of the base parts with certain sections cut out. And if we hit the little information button here, we can see them, um, the different versions at the display. Um, there's down one up to down four, which are cutouts starting from the bottom. Then we have wide, medium, and narrow which are central cutouts, and then uh, upwards, up one, up to three. So how does this work? 
let's take one four down two and do some resizing take two meter and a half and then i'm going to use a complete one-sided part and like this we have created a, a hole for where we can place a window or something else um, maybe let's size this also to 250 and then like this you can uh, create a, a section of windows um, then there are this, this, this button with, for the panels uh, panels are in fact um, again the one-sided uh, versions of the base part but only 25 50 or 75 percent of it starting from the bottom so this is the 25 one and they attach like that and they can be used like say you have a certain story sticking out or something um, or they can be used separately for having small uh, parts of roof um, which will match in style with your uh, main roof next we have a series of separate corners allowing a lot of different building combinations we have a valley a hill an in corner an out corner and a round corner so first let's see the valley which looks like this. In fact, the valley is the same part as we see here at the L connect and at the T connect, the separate version. A hill. which gives us this the hill again can be found here at the L connect the in corner looking like this The out corner, which looks like this. Then the round corner, the ninety degrees, is a regular part. And gives us this but then we have also 45 and 60 degrees round corners but those are a bit more complicated to build with um, i'm going to skip that for now and talk uh, by the end of the video about uh, how to work with uh, those corners and finally there are a bunch of uh, dormer parts not much to say about those they are just uh, the same as the regular single-sided straight parts in use.